and gentlemen, um, I'm of course delighted to be here uh, speaking to you today at this roundtable uh, discussion on Indo-Vietnamese cooperation in emerging Asia. That's the topic for today. Um, Asia, of course, is the largest and the most uh, populous continent uh, on the earth uh, today. And there are about 4.3 billion people who live here. And it is home to 60% of humanity. And the emergence of Asia from the underdevelopment that persisted until the middle of the last century uh, is of great uh, economic significance in our time. I don't think we quite realize what has happened, uh, which is uh, a basically economic and therefore a power shift which is happening in this part of the world. Uh, also, a new model for economic growth uh, built on globalization and accumulation of human and non-human capital uh, has been created. And uh, out of uh, the great sea of humanity, uh, I think uh, two countries, amongst others, I think there are four or five in Asia that one can actually point out to. Uh, India and Vietnam uh, stand out. And of course, India remains the world's largest democracy with a lot of, uh, lot of potential yet unrealized. But Vietnam uh, boasts her credentials as one of the region's fastest growing economies today, uh, second to none at all. And since the adoption of the policy of Dai Moi in uh, 1988, uh, Vietnam has averaged 7% economic growth, uh, which is a high level by any standards, which has enabled it to bring down poverty from 58% to 10% and also to be counted as a rising economic power. Of course, we keep talking about Vietnam still as a CMLV country, uh, but um, in fact, uh, the rise of Vietnam has gone almost unnoticed. Both countries, that is India and Vietnam, have realized the importance of our uh, mutual and sustainable development for bringing uh, equity and prosperity to our citizens. Uh, while maintaining a peaceful neighborhood, and I think that is very important for both to grow. Uh, neighbors, we always say, are a geographical accident, and friends are a result of a uh, conscious choice that we make, and a choice determined by common values and historical linkages. Mutual respect and common enduring interests is normally what sustains. Uh, so India and Vietnam long ago decided to make this choice, uh, this choice has defined the current cooperation and friendship between our countries. In fact, uh, if you look at the friendship between India and Vietnam, uh, that dates back to uh, centuries. And uh, of course, we are connected and guided by the teachings of Buddha. Uh, Vietnam went through a different phase in its development, so we do not pay much attention to that aspect as well. But that actually pervades uh, the way of life in Vietnam and um, of course um, our benefits, uh, beliefs and values but also our dealings with each other uh, and that's an underpinning which is now coming out slowly uh, as a much stronger binding force. Uh, so I'm glad to say that um, I would say that India has a trusted friend in Vietnam. The foundations of this trust uh, were laid by our leaders, that's Prime Minister Nehru and President Ho Chi Minh to begin with. And President Rajendra Prasad and Prime Ministers Indira Gandhi, Faman Dong, they all shared a true warmth and friendship. And successive generations of our leaders have nurtured this relationship. In fact, when our President visited Vietnam this time, he took with him some very rare old photographs of uh, the times uh, when these leaders met each other. And some of these are, uh, are actually short clips in black and white. Um, and when we actually looked at them, we found that that kind of bonhomie is very difficult to find in today's circumstances. Uh, India has always taken pride in its uh, principles of nonviolence and global peace. We continue to advocate for a more inclusive and a broadly represented world order. And Vietnamese friends have also lent their trust and support to us uh, in, this, in the demand that we have for uh, a legitimate demand for expansion and the permanent membership of the United Nations Security Council. 
and uh, an early reform of the United Nations so that it reflects the contemporary geopolitical realities. Um, in July this year, we celebrated the 60th anniversary of the Geneva Accords and the role played by uh, India in the International Control Commission, um, a role that it uh, assiduously continued to play for ensuring lasting peace in Vietnam was uh, noted once again on this occasion. Uh, we had this at the IDSA earlier this year. And also our efforts and sincerity in the International Control Commission uh, further consolidated the foundations of trust and cooperation between our countries in modern times. Then in 2012, we celebrated uh, the Friendship Year to mark our 40 years uh, of establishment of full diplomatic relations and five years of strategic partnership. Now, with such milestones already in place, we are at a very notable juncture in our bilateral relations. Uh, so we have our history, and that along with our convergence on strategic and security interests, uh, also the broadening and deepening economic ties, and of course, uh, close uh, cultural interlinkages from the pillars of, form the pillars of this very strong uh, friendship. Uh, we, of course, uh, stand for um, regional peace and stability and therefore prosperity. We also share a strategic understanding and cooperation at regional and multilateral fora, notably in the ASEAN and also related meetings, the East Asia Summit, also the WTO, the United Nations. So the years 2013 and 2014 have actually been truly remarkable years, as Rajiv said, uh, for the strategic partnership between us. We had several cabinet-level exchanges, and that includes the state visit of uh, the General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam. That happened in November 2013. Uh, we had the visit of our External Affairs Minister, uh, Srimadhi Swashma Suraj, which is, happened in August 2014. And then most, most recently, the landmark uh, state visit of the President of India in September 2015. So as we speak, we are preparing for the Vietnamese Prime Minister's upcoming state visit to India uh, from 27th to 28th of this month. Uh, so a series of such uh, apex level exchanges from both sides is actually a testimony to the precedence which, in the, which is attached by both our countries to our friendship. Uh, we, um, uh, Vietnam is a key partner, as I said, in our Look East policy, now called uh, Act Eat. East policy, uh, and a trusted friend in our inclusive vision for the region and the world. And the India-Vietnam cooperation in defense and security areas is growing at a very healthy pace. We are now implementing initiatives that the two sides had agreed upon. India is uh, committed to the capacity building of the Vietnamese armed forces. Our cooperation and exchange of delegations and training is robust. We also look forward to strengthening our development partnership with Vietnam and building our cooperation in science and technology and also the high technology areas. And both countries have recently signed an agreement for uh, US dollars, 100 million line of credit for defense procurement, uh, which is extended by the government of India to Vietnam. There is an India uh, Indira Gandhi high tech crime laboratory, which is being established in Hanoi. And we are confident that through such initiatives, uh, India and Vietnam will continue to reinforce uh, our mutual trust and understanding. Economic cooperation and engagement, as we all know, is the background of, uh, of all cooperation, uh, bilateral and multilateral. And we can never uh, not uh, overemphasize this, this, the significance of this relationship. So we greatly also value our economic interests in Vietnam. The current bilateral trade is at US dollars 8 billion, still below compared to immense potential explored and unexplored. Uh, the India ASEAN FTA in, in goods and of 2010 uh, has promoted some greater business, uh, leading to employment creation and also more trade, uh, generally with the ASEAN region, but Vietnam in particular. Uh, the business environment in the region, uh, I'm sure, will improve further uh, with the India-ASEAN FTA in services and investments. And then, of course, eventually when the um, RCEP comes into force. This regional integration is leading to, a more, to more and more avenues uh, on both sides. 
and we are also encouraging our business persons to take advantage uh, of this newfound uh, optimism and tremendous opportunities which have been thrown up. Uh, several large investment houses from India are now making their presence felt in Vietnam. Uh, one of the biggest invest, uh, Indian investments in Vietnam is that of Tata Power, uh, which costs about US dollars 1.8 billion. And um, uh, I think uh, we have to be thankful to the Vietnamese government, which has been very supportive of our increasing presence in the Vietnamese market. Uh, Indian companies, uh, besides the traditional sectors, which is oil and gas, uh, also pharmaceuticals, agro-processing, agrochemicals, information technology, and also mineral exploration, uh, are also making an entry now into power generation and infrastructure sectors, uh, which was not there uh, in the earlier years. And it is only a matter of days that a fully-fledged branch of the Bank of India becomes functional in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, our fellow Indians living and operating out of Ho Chi Minh City will be very pleased with this development. Uh, also, we have a new development with connectivity because the Jet Airways uh, uh, flights linking Mumbai to Delhi, uh, Mumbai uh, and Delhi to Ho Chi Minh City uh, are now starting from the 5th of November 2014. So that issue of poor air connectivity between our capitals would also be taken care of uh, because next year Vietnam Airlines will also start operations. Uh, as code share partner of Jet Airways, and this will be early, we promised in early 2015. Um, as I said, we share Buddhism as a valued element of, of our heritage, and uh, because of this, the President of India presented uh, a sapling of the holy uh, Bodhi tree to the President of Vietnam on his recent state visit, and this was warmly welcomed in Vietnam. Uh, both uh, presidents also jointly planted the sapling in the uh, gardens of the presidential palace. And the archaeological survey of India is now set to begin the conservation and restoration of the Cham monuments in Maison uh, province of Vietnam. The Cham civilization is actually, uh, is actually one of the best examples of Indo-Vietnam cultural connection. Uh, un unfortunately, not so many of our young persons are aware uh, of this reality. And the programs proposed to be undertaken as part of uh, youth affairs agreement, which we've concluded also recently, uh, will be designed to bringing uh, familiarization with these precious linkages that we have. Uh, the Indian government also regularly organizes the Festival of India in Vietnam, uh, which aims at showcasing unique aspects of our uh, composite culture, and that includes our cuisine, music, uh, dance, and arts, and yoga. And this March, uh, we organized a Buddhist festival in Hanoi, which was a resounding success. Um, tremendous amount of people uh, came to this festival. Uh, it, it actually brought thousands of devotees together in worship also. And I'm very happy that uh, we are going to now open a cultural center in Hanoi very shortly. This center will be pivotal in boosting our cultural presence in Vietnam. Then again, I come to development cooperation. Uh, and here again, we are making strong progress. Uh, we have extended 18 lines of credit so far to our Vietnamese friends for various projects. Uh, more recently, for the, um, for the uh, hydropower project in Nam Thai 4, and also Bainbo pumping station. Several training centers are being utilized for skill development, those which are already existing, most of them but we just use them for different purposes. Uh, each year, as part of our ITEC uh, program, almost 150 Vietnamese uh, students visit us in India. And exchange of students is also carried out under the um, other scholarship schemes which we have, such as the General Cultural Scholarship Scheme, uh, also the Educational Exchange Program, and the Mekong Ganga Cooperation Program. Uh, when our president visited Vietnam, uh, we offered more scholarships to our Vietnamese friends as a part of the Connect India program. And of course, we've set up a Nalanda University. Most of you would be knowing about it. So under that project also, uh, six seats, six scholarships have been offered to CMLB countries, and Vietnam still qualifies under that. Uh, <clears throat> so let me just sum up um, our vision for the future. And we are focused on three key areas. 
the one is connectivity second is economic engagement and youth um, and um, to bring greater vigor to our relations to involve wider sections of our society and also to make them enduring and long lasting now first we need to promote connectivity which is physical institutional and also people to people uh, and of course um, since air services will start this year um, I also hope that in five years time from now it will be possible to drive from Hanoi to Kolkata now this is a this is a dream that many of us in living in Kolkata have always had uh, but actually it could become a reality maybe not five years but maybe a few years down the line uh, because a trilateral highway is being built uh, via Myanmar which will connect us to Thailand and after that there is a uh, there's a connectivity program which the ASEAN also has, an ASEAN extended connectivity program, which also talks about linkages within ASEAN. And uh, if we can connect up to that at a certain point in time, which is our aim, then of course this will be possible. And I also wish to see our universities, think tanks, and also businesses uh, all connected, promoting exchanges of scholars and monks and also traders. Uh, tourism, including um, on the Buddhist circuit, as well as to places of natural and historical significance, will also bring us closer. And incidentally, the Prime Minister of Vietnam is first going to Bodh Gaya on the 27th, mm -hmm. and then he will arrive here for a business meeting in the evening, uh, and only later start his uh, political, you know, bilateral uh, meetings on the second day. Secondly, as I mentioned, uh, we cannot overemphasize the importance of building stronger economic links. Um, why, with ASEAN integration and also the reforms which we expect will happen in India, there are tremendous opportunities for our trade and investments in our respective markets. And uh, prospects for building regional supply chains and also joint ventures in third countries uh, are there, especially with Laos, with Cambodia. Uh, which will promote growth and also employment and also, I think, efficiencies in both countries. We are both actually diversifying our basket and uh, bilateral collaboration will, will deepen this engagement. Finally, we have to, we have to see greater involvement, investment in our uh, youth uh, because they will be our torch bearers. There is also an informal, um, I think there is an, in, there is an informal way of getting around this because uh, uh, for quite some time now, Indian films in Vietnam have uh, sort of disappeared due to the uh, presence of uh, Korean uh, pop culture and also also the films from China and Korea. But uh, they are uh, very keen to revive this linkage. Uh, so there is a sort of information deficit which has happened over some years about each other. Uh, and that is especially concerning the younger generation. Uh, so we need cultural exchanges, we need linkages between universities, uh, youth activities, also sports, films and contemporary technologies. And also the social media, I think, will be an important area to forge bonds between uh, young India and Vietnam. Uh, of course, we have a program under the ASEAN where we have a youth exchange program, but we are reinforcing that starting next year uh, by uh, making sure that uh, the youth in the universities come and spend some time, three months in Indian universities and vice versa. And Vietnam would also be covered under that. But that's a very small and minuscule number. We need to replicate that on a much, much more larger scale. Uh, we all agree, of course, that the center of gravity of economic power, as I said in the beginning, is shifting from the countries uh, in the West to Asia. A global order, new one, is emerging. Uh, which is uh, in which mo the Asian countries, and most notably uh, India and Vietnam, have significant roles to play. So, therefore, I'm sure that a closer collaboration, cooperation, uh, and the ongoing momentum that the relationship between India and Vietnam has uh, and has already acquired, uh, this will ensure that we continue to be reckoned as important players in, in emerging Asia. Uh, so it's a very important relationship, and in some, I would just say that uh, we look forward to greater things between us. Thank, Thank you. you.